We're going to look briefly at taking uh, second order differential equations and breaking them up into a system of first order differential equations. A very similar process applies to any order differential equation. You can always break them up into first order differential equations. Uh, since most of the time we only deal with second order or first order, we're not going to consider third order here, but a similar process could be applied. First question we might have is, you know, why are we going to do this? Uh, a couple of reasons. Well, first of all, we can, we can create a phase plane, right? Because if we get a system of equations, now we're able to generate some graphical, uh, graphical approach, graphical visualization of how the dependent variable evolves over time. And we can't do that with, well, we have not necessarily explored how to do that with just a second order differential equation because it contains a second derivative, a first derivative, and the dependent variable. So it depends on multiple factors. What we're really doing here is not changing the problem. We're just making it a little bit uh, uh, incrementally simpler to analyze. Second thing is we can, we, we can run runge cut of four. We know how to run that for systems using something like Octave or MATLAB. And we can approximate dependent variable values over time, which we don't know how to do with just a second order model. We can decompose it though, and we can apply runge cut to a system. Third reason is in general, you know, whatever tools uh, pertain to systems of ODEs, we can use those on this model. So basically we can use, you know, Laplace transforms in the second order ODE, but we can also now extend the toolbox to anything that we can do with systems. So first of all, the, the trick to doing this is, uh, well, we start with our spring mass system, let's say, and uh, of course B is the damping coefficient, M is the mass, K is the spring constant. This is the spring mass system model, and here's the trick. So this, this works the same way for any second order model. The first thing you do is you substitute, create a substitution that replaces the first derivative with a new dependent variable. So in and of itself, because dy dt is a rate of change per unit time, uh, it itself is a variable. It's a variable quantity. The rate of change of a spring mass system changes, and so it is itself a dependent variable. It depends on how much time has passed. So think about this in terms of like a skydiver. The, not only is your position a function of time, but also the speed at which you're falling is a function of time as well. So those are both time dependent, i.e. dependent variables. So this is our first ODE in the system, V equals dy dt. Okay, so we make the substitution. Well, what do we do with it? Well, first of all, we're going to notice that if you take the derivative of V, if you take the derivative of V, that's going to be the derivative of dy dt. So dv dt is the derivative of dy dt with respect to t. In other words, if you take the derivative of v, you get the second derivative of position. So dv dt is the second derivative of position with respect to time. That makes sense, right? Because really the reason we're calling this v is because dy dt is a velocity. It doesn't have to be v. You could call it x if you'd like. And then the derivative of velocity is acceleration. So that makes sense too. It's the derivative of velocity is the derivative of the derivative of position with respect to time. Next, we make a substitution. So we are going to take our spring mass system and we're going to replace dy dt with v, and we're going to replace the second derivative of y with, with dv dt. So now we've gone from having a second derivative to only having a first derivative. Now granted, it's still the derivative of the derivative, but the substitution made it at least look mathematically like it's a first derivative. So I've taken a second order equation, I've broken it down into a first order equation, and I'm just going to do some rearranging here. I'm going to move the anything that's not a derivative to the right to make it look more like a first order model that we've seen before. Uh, dv dt equals negative b over mv minus k over my. Uh, I chose not to plug in values for b, m, and k because this makes it more robust next time. You don't really have to do this decomposition again. You'll just know what the model looks like when it's already decomposed. So that's our second. Uh, that's our second ODE in the model. And now we'll put it all together. So the decomposition of the spring mass system, second derivative of y plus b over m times the first derivative of y plus k over m times y equals zero is dy dt is v. Remember, that was our substitution. That's still a differential equation. And then our second one after doing our substitution is dv dt equals negative b over m v minus k over m y. Now this is perfectly uh, perfectly suitable now to plug into runge kutta if you know your initial condition. You can let uh, dx dt be this guy and dy dt be this guy, and you can execute it for a certain duration of time. You can see how the spring mass system behaves without ever having to solve it. So one thing that we do notice, I just want to point out, is that in terms of our dependencies here, we know that the rate of change of v depends on y, right? The rate of change of uh, v depends on, oops, I have this make a little adjustment. 
tell this a little better. Uh, the rate of change of V depends both on V, on itself, and it depends on Y, uh, coming from Y. DY DT depends on V. So what we have here is this is a completely coupled system. Uh, as long as these arrows point from one system to the other and from the other system back to the first, then they both depend on each other. So this uh, raises again the issue of what we're going to address soon, which is how do you solve a completely coupled system? But for now, this will suffice. So this is what we have, and we're sticking to it. This is how you decompose a system.